All eyes are focused at Starbase, Texas. Meanwhile, on the eastern side of the Earth, there is a giant monster that has risen in the space race. And I'm sure you know who exactly that is. China has made aerospace history by launching the world's first methane-fueled rocket into Earth's orbit. They managed to pull that off even before SpaceX could get to their second orbital flight test of Starship. How did they do this? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Truly astounding, ladies and gentlemen, the Chinese private rocket company Land Space achieved a global first on July 12th by successfully reaching orbit with a methane-fueled rocket. The rocket named Zhu Chui 2, meaning Vermilion Bird 2, took off at 9 p.m. from Jiu Chuan Satellite Launch Center, a military-operated facility in the Gobi Desert of northwest China. It soared to an orbital altitude of approximately 453 kilometers at a speed of 7.6 kilometers per second. Immediately after the launch, Land Space acknowledged the success of the mission. The flight mission was completed according to the procedure, and the launch mission was a complete success, Land Space said. The Zhu Chui 2 rocket is the world's first liquid oxygen methane rocket that successfully entered orbit, and it is also the first launch vehicle in domestic civil and commercial aerospace to successfully enter orbit based on a self-developed liquid engine. Before, the company had utilized a solid fuel rocket design called Zhu Chui-1, which incorporated technology derived from China's military ballistic missile fleet. Zhu Chui-1 had its first launch in 2018, but unfortunately experienced a failure. Landspace then shifted its focus to completing the development of the larger Zhu Chui-2. Zhu Chui-2 is relatively smaller compared to other methane rockets being developed in the United States. It stands at approximately 50 meters in height, has a diameter of 3.35 meters, and weighs 216 tons. The first stage, featuring the distinctive red bird-like shape of the rocket, is powered by four TQ-12 liquid oxygen methane engines, each generating a thrust of 67 tons. The second stage utilizes a specialized vacuum-optimized TQ-12 engine with a thrust thrust of 80 tons combined with a TQ-11 engine with a thrust of 8 tons. These are China's first methane engines used on a launch vehicle. The successful launch has ushered in a new era for the country's space program, taking a significant step forward in developing rockets capable of refueling and reusability. This achievement has positioned China as a leader in the competition for liquid methane oxygen rocket technology. Of course, this is not the only effort in launching methane-fueled rockets. Since the beginning of 2023, Relativity Space's Terran-1 rocket also faced failure in March. SpaceX, the world's largest private commercial company, has been conducting tests of its massive Starship and Super Heavy Booster spacecraft. However, their missions have been halted due to issues with the rockets. Although it has not yet reached orbit, SpaceX's Starship spacecraft is still in a league of its own compared to the Zhu Chui-2 rocket. Zhu Chui-2 is a relatively new and developing rocket in contrast to SpaceX's Starship, which has already achieved a level of sophistication and complexity, undergoing extensive testing over a significant period of time. In terms of power and scale, Starship is the largest spacecraft in the world, and it will be used for critical missions in space in the future. Regardless of the records set by the Chinese rocket, they cannot diminish the substantial influence of SpaceX. In addition to Terran-1 and Starship, there are other rockets in various stages of development that utilize methane, partially or entirely, as fuel. These include United Launch Alliance's Vulcan, Rocket Lab's Neutron, and Blue Origin's New Glenn. These companies are actively working on the development of their methane-fueled rockets. And honestly, ever since methane gas has been recognized as an efficient fuel for rockets, it seems to have become a trend for the future. Traditionally, large liquid-fueled rockets relied on fuels such as kerosene, hydrogen, or hydrazine. However, we've seen diminished use in hydrazine due to its toxic nature in larger rockets, although it is still employed in many of China's Long March missiles which are operated by state-owned enterprises. Liquid hydrogen offers excellent fuel efficiency but presents challenges due to its extremely low temperature requirements and propensity for leaks due to the small size of hydrogen molecules. RP-1, a highly refined form of kerosene, is currently the most common liquid propellant used in operational rockets. Kerosene 
kerosene can be stored at more manageable temperatures and powers high thrust engines. Its higher density allows for smaller fuel tanks. That's why engineers have found a more viable option, methane gas. This alternative fuel offers a range of advantages over traditional liquid fuels, mainly for reusable rockets. Kerosene fueled rockets like SpaceX's reusable Falcon 9 boosters accumulate more soot inside the engines, necessitating thorough cleaning and refurbishment between missions. This is one reason why SpaceX is transitioning to methane for its next generation Starship rocket. Furthermore, methane holds potential benefits that may only be realized in the future, potentially decades from now. Future explorers could leverage Mars's natural resources to produce methane as rocket fuel, opening up new possibilities for sustained exploration and resource utilization. There is no doubt anymore that methane gas is currently the most preferred fuel for the next generation of rockets. Returning to what China has been striving to achieve in conquering space in recent times, it is undeniable that they have made significant progress. They have previously achieved certain milestones. For instance, in 2021, China conducted 55 orbital launches, almost double the number of launches by SpaceX, the largest space company in the United States. This number was also four times more than the total number of launches in the United States. However, it should be noted that a year later, China fell behind due to the dominance of SpaceX. All the rockets launched in China still fell short of SpaceX's records. It's not an exaggeration to say then that China sees SpaceX as its biggest competitor in the space race. Space stations are also one of the areas in which China has made significant advancements. In 2022, China completed its own space station called Tiangong. Although it's much smaller than the ISS and only has three modules, China has built and operated all the different components, making them the sole operator of the station. But of course, they know that they would need to cooperate with another country if they hope to match the ISS's historic scientific findings. They have continuously called for space cooperation with many regional countries, most notably Russia and members of the Asia-Pacific Space Cooperation Organization, including Iran, Pakistan, Thailand, and Turkey. Clearly, this is aimed at accelerating their space development, and they even aspire to surpass the global superpower, the United States. In a report published in August of 2000, 22, the Pentagon predicted that China could surpass U.S. capabilities in space as early as 2045. This is a crucial period when both the United States and China have plans to send humans to the moon. While the U.S. has been implementing the Artemis program, China has its own campaign called the International Lunar Research Station. This has attracted the interest of two private Western parties, one based in Hawaii and a startup company in Switzerland. These companies have also participated in the U.S led Artemis program and have shown keenness in joining China's deep space exploration projects. The primary objective of the ILRS initiative is to construct a fully functional research base on the moon by the 2030s. China has outlined a roadmap for achieving this goal, which includes a series of five planned missions utilizing their upcoming Long March 9 Super Heavy rocket. These missions will lay the foundation for the lunar base, establishing crucial infrastructure such as nuclear energy systems, communications networks, and astronomical observation capabilities. Initially, the research station will operate as a fully robotic facility, but it is envisioned that it will eventually host Chinese taikonauts, or astronauts, and potentially accommodate crews from other member nations. Based on China's accomplishments thus far, McDowell, an astronomer at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, said, In the past 20 years since China finally decided to go big on space, they've been in in catch-up mode, and now they're kind of there, and they're starting to do things that the U.S. hasn't done. With this amazing development, China will certainly continue to be a formidable competitor in the space race. Well, folks, that wraps up our show for today. We hope you enjoyed learning more about what's happening over in China. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.